A couple months ago, I played the most underrated mod pack I've ever found on CurseForge. Cisco's Fantasy Medieval Adventure RPG. Okay, it's not the best name. It was intense, absurd, and whatever third buzzword you want, Cisco's had it all. After I made that video, Cisco's mod pack exploded up to over 150,000 downloads. And Cisco told me himself in DMs that he had something even bigger cooking. Then things went dark. I didn't hear from Cisco for months, and I kind of moved on to my other favorite pastime, not making content and falling asleep on stream. But now it's back, Cisco's ultimate. It's the definitive experience showcasing everything Cisco learned from the last mod pack and turning it into a fresh new one, refining it into the true medieval experience. Uh, is what I was told. I've actually never even loaded up the game. But now I'm testing my skills as a Minecraft player and Cisco as a modder to see if I can beat his 33 different bosses across four tiers of difficulty, all in hardcore. And Cisco promised me this time it would be cheese proof. <laughs> we'll see about that. Welcome to Cisco's ultimate 100 days. Just like last time, there were specific custom classes to join called Origins before we could start. I'm not gonna read all of them to you as I took 40 straight minutes doing that myself, but I will overdramatically recap the stats that I chose. Demigod Umbra, the offspring of a dark primordial god and a human. A dark power slumbers within you, unable to be fully utilized. Divine strength, your divine heritage grants you might. You do 40% increased damage. Hubris, your natural strength makes you prideful, careless. You take 20% increased damage. Umbral lineage, regions with strong umbral energy empower you. You take 15% less damage in the end. Dark vision. Darkness does not obscure you, and you may freely see within it. Heavenly hunger. Your stomach craves divine sustenance, and as such, you may only eat golden apples and carrots. Divine corpus. Your divine body is strong, granting you increased base health. You are favored by Thor, god of lightning and strength. He grants you his thunderous blessing. Minor boon of might. Thor empowers your strikes. You gain plus five to your attack. Greater Boon of Fury. Upon slaying the Ender Dragon, Thor grants you a 8% increase to damage dealt. Merchant. Always looking for an additional emerald. Merchants are proficient traders. Restocking. Restocking. Villagers you trade with never run out of resources to trade for you. Charisma. You're able to convince wandering traders to offer some of their rarer items to you. And with that, my glass cannon build was complete, and I loaded into the unknown. I spawned in a desert and failed to really do anything of interest. <laughs> Just kidding. You knew that wasn't true. I mean, come on. This is an EQ video. I immediately grabbed a shitload of wood and stormed into the giant structure called Vegas, I think. There were wither skeletons, zombies, pillagers, all decked to the nines in netherite and firing rockets out of their crossbows. If you needed a reason to not break into here on day one, that should more than suffice. But there is insane loot in here for the brave and the stupid. And I'm at least one of those. By the end of day one, I had wormed my way through the holes in this building and found diamond armor of all sorts. It's worth noting that Cisco, the developer, was in my live chat while I was streaming and recording this on my second channel. <clears throat> Plug here. And let me tell you, he was not happy. By the end of day one, I was almost in full diamond armor. And on day two, Timestamp day two block of never right. I also found diamond boots, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is on the 19.2 version of Minecraft, right before Mojang added smithing templates. Okay, look, I didn't want to break this game this fast, and I know my whole thing is cheesing games and breaking games, but cover me in debris on day two? That's a little insane. Cisco was just quietly watching all this unfold and just seething. <laughs> I finished the day by making a netherite shield and digging higher and higher throughout this base. Day three. Day three, I was getting cocky and a little too comfortable and was very quickly brought back down to reality when this happened. Give me that. Ah! Against all odds and Cisco's hopes, I managed to scale to the top for the super loot room. That's a terrible one. I managed to get tons of diamonds and a way off this platform without dying. Ender pearls. I didn't want to leave in the middle of the night though, so I thought while the moon was still high, I'd take a peek around for more shit to steal. And what I found? Uh, a couple more ancient debris. <laughs> Also, I got the, uh, everything we need to go to the nether to get blaze rods now. <laughs> Holy shit, how much is it? 
I'm not gonna main mine it. Yeah, it's eight more right now. The structure's about to be removed. It is not an easy thing to climb if it makes you feel any better. Damn, dude! We set off a whole war! Holy shit, man! Y'all, it's not that deep. It was just Taco Bell. Fuck! No, you don't get just a free shot at me. That's not fair. Oh, wait, I can mine these blocks. They are, you know, money. Trident! I could feel the tips of my wings begin to sear, so before we burned up completely in Icarus, I ran off. Day five, I went from big tower to small pyramid and searched for the old eye. It's rare and one of the 12 eyes we need to take on the Ender Dragon. No dice in this place, however. Exploring a bit more, I found two way stones and finally got the Stone Age achievement. I can't believe I got cover me in debris before fucking Stone Age. <laughs> wild, man. And maybe it's a little early to say this, but kind of like invincible. I mean, I'm on day five in full netherite, whenever everyone else would probably be at like iron at this point. I killed this evoker in a, an abandoned village and got a totem of undying and used extra netherite so I could wear it around my neck and still have my shield. And I have gold and golden apples to satiate my character because that's all they can eat for a long time. And as night fell, I didn't even need to hide. I just kept gallivanting around, looting, pillaging, and stealing everything my heart desired. This is so unfair. Damn you, Cisco. What do you call that? I call it bullshit. Holy fuck. So that was a mutant skeleton and an infernal boss that just turned my insides into my outsides instantly. Luckily, I was able to hide underground like a little bitch for the night and hold on to my very fragile afterlife at the cost of my totem. This is where I learned that Cisco's wasn't playing around. Silver lining, I found the old eye in a weird structure underground here, and afterwards I left everything else to their devices for the night and tried to drum up a way to get stronger. Because the first thing that has ever hit me in this game has fucked me sideways. By the end of day five, I found something. Day six, while I'm cowering in a geode, let me tell you about today's sponsor. By me. That's right, bitches. I'm the sponsor. And all I gotta ask is for you to like and subscribe. It's currently 3 a.m. right now. And that's my call to action for you. Here, look, I'll give you time to do it. I'll crush this while you do. Subscribe. Oh God, that was like the third take. Okay, now let's teach you how to make Dreadsteel. Dreadsteel is a moderate to late game gear that is hard to make, consisting of netherite ingots, diamond, gold, iron, everything that I just stole, huh? And once you put all those together, you get one ingot of dread steel, and you can upgrade netherite gear with that ingot. I mean, it's not like it's the only things I've been collecting through the entire game. Netherite, gold, diamond, iron ingots. Oh, and look, a geode for amethyst. <laughs> but dread steel doesn't stop there. We need to make a weapon, the dread steel scythe. This recipe is usually locked to the end progression because you need end rods. But if you say, raid the Taj Mahal Vegas looking thingy for chorus fruit and you cook it and then go to the nether and piss everyone off with your luck by spawning in a fortress, <laughs> steal exactly one blaze rod, cook the chorus fruit, slam them together, we can make the scythe leagues before we're supposed to make it in the end, which Cisco did not like and informed me next patch he would be taking that out. <laughs> But I don't care, because I've got fucking dread steel, baby. And now maybe I can survive long enough to find a place to live. I'm still in a hole. Day eight, I ran back to the Taj Mahal structure because it's at zero, zero. And the way Cisco's mod pack works is every enemy is based on a level from one to literally infinite. And the further you go out, the higher the level and the more ass kicky the enemy is. So I made sure to base as close to literal spawn as possible to fight the weakest enemies. If I went out like three biomes from now and they're level 30s, they would probably still one shot me even in my dread steel. In the abandoned village, I found this relic called the magic mirror, which I was pretty happy about. In a separate village, really close to the mirror one, I found actual civilization and had my first real sleep of these 100 days, feeling safe in the blanket of society. Day nine, I broke the fucking game again. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. Ring of hunger listening, critical thinking, keeps the hunger bar always, no, no, no! GG's, GG's. Oh, Cisco's gonna kill me. Oh, shit! No fucking way! So that is the ring of never be hungry again, which fixes my golden apple problems, cause you know, 
I'll never need food again. <laughs> Day nine, we're three hours into this and I still don't have a place to live, even though I've probably broke this game 20 more ways than Cisco intended. So I'm gonna steal that pyramid. Only problem was the damn husks that kept spawning because some could spawn as bosses. I've never lived in a, in a temple. We could like completely transform it. We're like three inches from a village. Maybe Thor would like it if we lived there. Let's do it. Day 10 with a bottle of Crystal Skull Vodka, I went ghost busting to get all these spirits out my house. And I installed the highest security tech in all of Minecraft, wooden doors. Now, house, pyramid, house amid, perfectly safe. One of the biggest problems that this base does have though is that there's like no trees. The only ones I could find were these yucca trees that got me enough wood and saplings to plant more because they're the only trees that literally grow in this desert. They're the only trees that I'm going to have in this dimension that is. But heaven, now heaven might have more in store for me. I remember the last 100 days I literally bitched at Cisco to add the Aether and now that Ultimate Edition is out, he actually fucking did it. So thank you, Cisco, you're amazing. Time to make you regret that decision. Whilst in the Aether, I'm here for Zaynite and Ambrosia. I also found Gravitite, but it's not needed. We're only gonna be here for a minute. I got the necessary gems and went back to my base and made an altar. This altar repairs gear with Ambrosia and will let me fix up broken netherite so I can upgrade the helmet and boots to Dreadsteel. The reason I haven't already is because you can only upgrade them if they're not broken. You may call this cheese, but that's literally how the Aether is designed, okay? The end of the day, I was lighting up my base and strutting around in a full set of dread steel minus the boots. Day 11, slowing down a bit, I made my research table so I can use the magic mirror, because apparently if I don't know what the mirror does, I don't know how to hit the right click button. And I learned what these rollerblades are, and spoiler, they suck. They, they're just like soap shoes. Oh, I hate the rollerblades. Day 12, I reloaded my game and literally the one chunk wouldn't load and it happened to be in my fucking house. So, relogging fixed He's approaching, this. sir! He just gives me really bad poison. I live here, not you! Damn, fuck, okay. Okay, problem. So many husks keep spawning and either them or their ghost keep being infernal bosses with host my funeral as their attributes. So we need to move. Into the nether we go to hide for now because I was taking an eccentric shit today. I literally came up with this on the toilet. Like this is not a bit. And an idea popped in my head on how to make Cisco cry. That's right, baby. If it wasn't clear, we're gonna be doing some more cheese. This game requires an ungodly amount of netherite, as you've already seen. And we're gonna get all that we need by exploiting two things. The vein miner and that hunger ring that I got a few days back. The plan is simple. Using your fist, you can break netherrack in like one second. And with vein miner, you can break 64 of them in one second. Usually this would burn our saturation super quick, but thanks to the ring of no thanks I'm full, we can bypass that. And by using our fist, we never have to worry about durability. So about every three seconds, I can take out around 128 blocks of netherrack and uncover so much debris. So that's what I did for day 13 and 14. It was really tedious, but oh, it's so worth it because I have a plan for all this netherite, and it's all about to come together. It's the lad! All right, come into my office. Don't worry about why it's just a hole in the ground. It's fine. I wish to show you my wares. What the fuck? Look at that. Ta-da! Oh, da-da-da! Cisco! Cisco! Hey, hey, buddy! Hey, friend, pal! Um, I've been playing your game the intended way. That's what you've missed. Uh, ignore what is about to happen, Cisco. It's better if you avert your eyes, my friend. It is better if you avert your eyes. It is just much better if you just don't even look at it. It is just, life is just a better thing if you do not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to get more netherite. Will you stay here, my friend? If I just... Here, look, I'll protect you. Hello, friend. This is your home now. I'm gonna go give you more netherite to eat. 
I'll be back. That's right. Not only can you get five netherite scrap for four ancient debris, but for two netherite ingots, you can get a totem of undying from this trader. Let's just pick up a few of those. <laughs> Day 16, I went back home and made more dread steel to finally finish off all the gear I could need. And now I have way too much netherite and not enough gold to make the bars. So I ran around the cave searching for everything needed to make netherite totems and anything else that would keep me alive. I actually found things that would do the opposite. Hi, Ferris Wartnut. How are you? I want to know what level you are. 69. I made it back home and made the final piece of dread steel, which came with these sick thread dies, and I let my chat pick which one I should wear. We went with the white one, and oh my god, it's gorgeous. It's not even... Uh. Excuse me. It's not even the best gear, but I think that might have to be the thumbnail because it looks so damn good. After fawning over my gear, I decided that enough was enough with these damn husks and I decided to move. I wanted to get as close to zero zero as possible, but that's literally the Taj Mahal. So then my chat and I had an idea. What if I lived under the Taj Mahal? Like since it was built so high in the sky and it needs to be built on a structure, it just has a giant layer of sandstone that I could very well go back to my rat tunneling roots and make a base down here. And for the next couple of days, right under the rocket pillager's nose, I lived and hid and moved everything from that damn haunted pyramid of fuck you that I used to live in. Day 18, I needed to make this hole a home, so I did what any white mom on Pinterest would do. I lit a portal to a whole new dimension. I'm not joking. Uh, doing this was because I needed to go to the Twilight Forest for trees. Because everywhere around me is a fucking desert. I got the wood needed for chests and a child jockey. Okay, back home now, and it's time to start Simple Storage. Simple Storage is my personal favorite storage mod, which every time I tell anyone that, they proceed to mock me about it, so I can't wait to read the comments. Regardless what you think of this mod, it makes storage fast and easy, and it's a painless way for organization. We haven't done that one in a while, have we? And so I hung up my hat and sword for day 19 and just built me a storage system. I also repositioned the Twilight Forest portal, made the Aether and Nether portals have a little hallway, and generally tried to make this hole in the Taj Mahal a pleasant place to live. Just, uh... Don't tell the owners. In a slightly less ethical change of pace, I also robbed the nearby village of all their people, but uh, we don't gotta dwell on that one. You know, today was just cute little home improvement with just a pinch of abduction and slavery. <clears throat> Moving on to day 21, I'm in the nether getting tons of glowstone from this Celestium crater, which has some cool gems, but mainly a shitload of glowstone, because we're about to make a staple of Cisco's content. Bright steel. This is technically the first gear that you should make past netherite and not dread steel like I did, but this gear will be upgradable throughout the entire project and its later upgrades are going to be needed to keep me alive. I require about four stacks of glowstone, two stacks of gold, and a stack of iron to make all the relics that I need and their armor. I ended day 21 by ignoring the screams of the villagers that I acquired and made a bright steel pickaxe. Bright steel block. Make the bright steel pickaxe. Da diddly do da day. Day 22, Bright Steel has another purpose as well. It's needed to make divine rubies. These bitches are expensive. But to make one, I need lapis to make an arcane apparatus. That apparatus can break down bright steel and netherite, which means, yes, we need more netherite. These recipes used to be so much more simple, and then I went into this pack and I abused how simple they were, and Cisco, I think he took it personally. So after a thousand and one crafting recipes, no I made my first. Morning. Divine Despite Ruby. This, my half brothers and sisters in the heavens always looked favorably upon me and intervened at key points in my life. I did, however, have a natural aptitude for the things arcane. And so, the minute I was of age, I left my small village to enroll with the Order of the Owl at the Grand Citadel. There, I attained the rank of Sage. I would eventually grow bored and decided to embark on a journey to truly make a name for myself. Using my knowledge of alchemy, I forged a ruby that would be help my, that would be help my borrow. Damn it, Cisco, I was trying to be cinematic. Using my knowledge of alchemy, I forged a ruby that would help my borrow, my borrow and harness. What? Do I not know this word? I forged a ruby that would be help to my borrow and harness the divine gifts of my more powerful kin. Thomas, make that cinematic and keep in the fuck up because it's funny. That ruby is going to make the Band of Brilliance, which just gives me 20% more health and armor, so that's a fucking no-brainer. Now that we're dripped out, I need to make a slave qu <laughs> villager hall. Um, 
villager hall. To make my gear overpowered, I need good enchants, and I could sit here and do apotheosis for forever, but did you forget? I'm a merchant. There's a lot of bosses in this, and I want to fight them all, so I'm going to need gear that can back up that drive. And our friends in boxes are going to help us do just that. Side note, first try Fortune 3, bitches. Day 23, I tortured men in tiny boxes with the undead to farm for iron. What the fuck was that sentence? Can you tell it's 3 a.m. while I'm writing this? And then this happened. That man's drip the fuck out. Bye. Now, like I just said, if you remember the classes that I chose at the beginning of this, you'll remember I picked the merchant. And that's because he will never run out of trades for me. One Fletcher? Infinite Fletchers. One farmer? Infinite farmers. So to farm emeralds till my heart's content, all I had to do was make one Fletcher in a box with the Easy Villagers mod and sell him sticks that I've stole from the Twilight Forest. And with those fat stacks, I started enchantment cycling. And the first thing that I got were insane. Number one, Endless Quiver, which is infinity on steroids. Number two, Knowledge of the Ages. I'll talk about that one later. And three, Sharpness Four. Not everything I need, but it's a good start. Day 25, I need more sticks. And the best way to do that was ironically deforest the entire Twilight Forest. I made a b <laughs> But I mean, how bad can I possibly be? I made a billion fucking sticks and went back to the trade cycling when this happened. Does my zombie, rare sprinting zombified piglin, the slowing bitch. Excuse me? Cisco? I I need him. What is he trying to do? You can't get the children. They're in the box. Where they belong. No, I'm not fast enough. I didn't realize that you would just do that. Come on, slowing bitch. I'll put him in one or two places. I don't mind. He seems to only like two places. This block, which we might be able to manipulate. I can't read his ability, but you know that is the slowing bitch. Now that I've captured my new friend over there, I got Mending, Unbreaking, and Eternal. I'll touch on Eternal a little bit here, but this enchant needs to not be in this game. It literally prevents death for 200 durability damage on your gear. Some late game Cisco gear has upwards of 2,500 durability. I want to be overpowered, but that is a little bullshit. Before we let Cisco remove it though, I did just snag it for the time being. It's not my fault he left it in the game. Trust me, we'll get plenty strong without it. Or I'll just explode at the next thing with a higher than level 20. Who knows? Only one way to find out. Day 26, I got protection enchant. three. Day 27, the last enchant I wanted was looting three. Finally got that, and now I'm finally able to deck out my bright steel armor. Or should I say, my Cisco armor. To make Cisco's armor, you oh look, another eye. <clears throat> to make Cisco's armor, you need drum roll, please. <laughs> Netherite! While looking for more ancient debris than I think Minecraft can even generate, I found this hellish mineshaft, and in it was a reflection necklace, relic, and a midnight robe relic. I also found some blazes, and this is how that went. Alright, one more time, chat. We gotta get to, like, level 30. He's back! He didn't die, he's just pissed! Oh, he's alive! He literally is, he's just chilling. He's just like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? Dude? He then ate a carrot. Now he's good again. We just look upward. We won't be hurting anyone. Salty's building a miniature. I capped off this day by using all my enchanted books and putting all the enchants I can on my bright steel armor. Oh, hey, I'll need that skull. On day 29, I was decking out all my bright steel, ready to go get whatever I needed for the Cisco upgrade. I also nearly died to an infernal blaze, but that's okay, we don't gotta mention that. To explain radiant rubies, they're just divine rubies on crack. And to get them, we need divine rubies, but we also need nether stars. So we gotta kill the wither. I fought a shit ton of wither in my time in Minecraft, modded being no different. So once I had all my enchants, I thought I was ready to absolutely dominate. And <laughs> I was so wrong. Day 30, I made a bow with Endless Quiver, and it fires infinite obsidian arrows now for plus 20% damage on them. And I took all the Wither Skulls that I'd procured and tunneled to the center of the earth with Vein Miner. But I looked away for one second while digging and... That's not a good way to start a wither fight. Oh well, I should be completely fine as long as the wither has a reasonable set of health. Cisco, this is ridiculous.
what else I could do, Cisco. I did literally everything. I think this is a little bit. Put gems in your gear. Dumb. I don't like that at all. No, all wither spawn is double bosses. You wait right here, buddy. You wait right here. Yeah, I think 10,000 for this fight is way too much. Like, if that's 10,000, what the fuck do the other things have? What does the Ender Dragon have? This stuff is insane. Whatever you do. I know this is like a typical normal Minecraft thing to do. The eyes you need. Or you do not do this. It will be literally impossible. By the way, I'm fucked if uh, this thing kills me because this is a two-handed weapon. So. Yeah, he's doing four fucking hearts. And you're telling me he barely does damage. Fuck. That's disrespect in my house. That's what we call disrespect. And yeah, this is this is pointless. Oh fuck. No problem. We'll just get a couple more gems socketed onto her gear, and fuck you if you don't know how that works. I don't have time to explain. A literal eldritch horror is just chilling under my house. You're gonna have to wait to know what I mean. Well, under the house that I termited my way into. Still, it's a problem. With these gems, surely now I'll be able to- I mean, here's getting my ass oh, back Despite what it looks like, Cisco hasn't gone criminally insane. Listen, it's basically that I didn't read the instructions, and really, who's surprised? Mainly the quest book. All hail its holy divine wisdom. You see, in this Minecraft game, you're supposed to go through the quest book before skipping to the end, getting more powerful gems and skills along the way. My Dumbo baby brain just thought, eh, I fought the wither in worse games. And that's why I was taught a Smith and lesson. Think Shout out Max. Call from God. So now that I've been thoroughly humbled, we're gonna have to actually play the game. Booing Boo. sounds here. First, we're gonna need to explore. We should have enough skill for that. And we're trying to find all 12 of those eyes that I talked about way at the beginning of this. Yeah, it turns out that's like step two of Minecraft. For now, I found the corrupted eye at a pillager outpost and a flawless gem that I'm pocketing for now. You're gonna need to know a lot of info on gems from Apotheosis, but for now, just know the tears. Cracked is dog shit. Uncommon, it's like a McDonald's meal. Nothing to write home about, but at least you aren't starving. Flawed is like sky vodka. Nothing good, nothing bad, but it's still gonna get you there. Epic is like a Fortnite round that you almost won. So it's good, but like, could have been better. And flawless is like your grandma's cookies. Like I'm gonna go into a coma for that shit. Perfect, I can only describe to you as divine fucking wrath. So those are the tiers of gems that we can get. Got it? No? Good, moving on. So timestamp uh, me going down into a dungeon. Jesus and boss silverfish of power and scary. He dropped a divine ruby on death, bro. I thought it was radiant for a minute and I was shit in my pants. Fuck yes, and there was the rogue guy in here. Mmm, Cisco, you fixed your back from last time. Thank God. Uh... Oh God, I do not want to go there. Instead, we'll take these towers. They always have tons of apotheosis gems in there, so just yoink, yoink, don't blow up, yoink. Today, I so, mainly jumped in this dungeon to find eyes, we gems, need to do this and whatever I could get my grubby so, little loot goblin hands well on. Just start oh, and the fucking space program. That creeper works at NASA! Correction, he did work at NASA. I got a couple more enchant books and found another old eye. Great. Eyes don't stack, by the way, so they're really not useful to find duplicates. Got a flawed gem of the combatant. Don't worry, you weren't ready for me to explain what different types of gems do yet. But I did snag a splendor gem, so make sure you drop that down in this section of the textbook. Day 36 was more of what you just saw. More looting, more cool gem towers. I netherited a totem because the wither took all of mine. Casual trauma dumping. Eventually, we're going to make a crazy ass fucking slipstream gem, though. And we're going to have a bow that shoots faster than my dad walked out on me. What? <laughs> 
and snagged an epic gem of the earth. And day 37, I damn near lost my mind. That, that is an ancient city. And let me explain to you why 37 days into Minecraft, we're going to raid it. Without a doubt, a warden would knock my ass into next month. However, in those chests is a chance to get Dragon's Breath, one of the key ingredients to making the Radiant Rubies, I found out. To upgrade our gear further, we would also need those Nether Stars, but one bullshit boss at a time, please. You usually aren't supposed to get Radiant Gear and what it can make till after the end. That's what the Dragon Breath being locked is for. But this is EQ, and you know I'm gonna do everything in my power to break this game, even if that means becoming Sly Cooper. So we can't go to that one. We can go to that thing, but it's not that important. We can go to that thing, and it is important, so... That one looks like the best bet. Oh, hey, I said I had the best music for doing this. Hold on. So Shriekers only get alerted if the other thing is there. So both have to be present. I think Cisco's fucking with me. I keep hitting tab to see all the entities in the area. No, no monkeys. Flawless solar gem, fire damage, plus six fire damage. Might be really good on a sword. Cisco might add monkeys now. Bro, I've never heard of a mod ever that adds monkeys to the ancient city that tell on you. I, he's totally fucking with me. It's from Alex Mobs? Fuck you. No, it's not. You don't have Alex Caves in this. Eat dick. No, you're lying. I know, but I know all of Alex Mobs. There's no monkey in the... Look, I'm gonna type in monkey right now. Monkey. Fuck. You really think we need to do business at a time like this? This is when you need to think finances happen? This, right here. When we're in here is when you think, oh, what a great time to do a little bit of bartering with a fellow compatriot. This is what you think? I am invisible and the Shriekers still don't care. You can't just waltz around here like you fucking own the place. You're gonna get died. Hey, next chest. Don't follow me. Everything was going great and I had all the dragon's breath that I needed and tons of bonus loot. So of course this happened. We found some really good gems though. Uh, think that's fine? It was not. I, I, I saw it too late. We might as well open it. Get the dragon's breath. Shriekers are too close. Mirror doesn't work when that effect's going off. You bitch, Cisco. Wait, why is my mirror not working at all? Huh? Cisco? The mirror stopped working, Cisco. Where big warden guy? I'm actually okay that he's not here. I think we're out of guesses though. That didn't go as planned. What I was trying to do was use the magic mirror to go home, but apparently it has a range now, so that sucks. Now we have to walk our happy ass home, but hey, at least we're not dead. Day 39, I'm doing obscure things, like killing wither skeletons of Wee Rare wither skeleton of Wee That was his name. And zombies to fill out my quest book, found more flawless gems, and then I killed a stray and his balls dropped. Holy shit, Ultra Thorn. What'd you drop? <gasps> he dropped Godford! Fine, fuck! <laughs> so we need those to resocket our gear. Won't be doing that till I have any gear worth resocketing, but I will never complain about orange balls. The next eye on our list should be the magical eye, which has a 5%, yeah, 5% goddamn chance to drop from an evoker. Yeah, okay, that's, that's super fair. No, we got this. We're just gonna take a couple of attempts. One good thing that came up today is yet again, chorus fruit. My sweet succulent fruit of cheese is back at it again. Because if I just shove the one that I found into the blaze spawner that we converted, apotheosis makes them just stop. Like, there, there's nothing going on up there. It completely destroys the AI of anything in this spawner. So for the sake of gunpowder and cause it's fun, I put a creeper spawn egg in and just went to town. This got me another quest in my quest book and sod in my pants at the same time. But before we continue our Slaughterfest program, you can get a flawless gem per boss you kill in the twilight forest. Needless to say, I was surprised. Timestamp, you get a flawless gem for any boss that you kill in this dimension. So that Naga's got my fucking name on it. Come on, bitch. It's very quick, but that works. And next fight. Hello, friend. No shot. <laughs> it counts as a projectile. <laughs> Sup, bitches. Mama's home! 
Bye, assholes. Day 41, I tried to scale the gear gas tower and got my shit rocked, but eventually I made it to the top and returned the favor. I didn't mute for this part, but 97% of you guys would go deaf and the other 3% of you watch my content so you already are, so it wouldn't matter. Just know she screams. Day 42, I made a map to the Twilight Forest to figure out where the hell I'm going, fought the Mino Shroom, and gave me I a got... gem of lifesteal. Oh, hmm. shit. Yes, totally not gonna abuse that one. Stealing the secret loot, like it's a Binding of Isaac game, I got more tyrannical and warlord gems and the Maze Breaker, which is useless, so we're throwing it in the garbage and moving on to Hydra Mommy. Day 43, here's the Alpha Yeti. Dead. Ice Queen, dead, big pickaxe that I nearly died to acquire, and a flawless gem of you get the fucking point. I finished the Twilight Forest escapades by breaking into the Obsidian Vaults, stealing its shit, and yeeting from the forest. Call that shit a speedrun. From all the Progress. XP I got during that quest, we can now dump it into the skill tree. Bet you were all waiting for me to talk about this, weren't you? Last time Cisco made a pack, this was as confusing as fuck and broke my computer. But don't worry, this time, it won't break my computer. Pay attention, this'll be on the test. There's about 10 million ways we can take this, but since I've used a shield this entire game and I'm about as durable as my emotional state right now, we're specking it a defense first, which will lead up to health and damage increase while wearing shields. This whole thing's basically a giant skill tree where you can just go into certain different directions, but you can only have a max of 100 skill points. I don't even have it close to that right now because even though the quests have been giving me dick loads of XP, I can't use them because they only count from mob killing XP. I have a plan to abuse this mechanic, but for now, I think we're finally strong enough to deal with our neighbor. Seven, five, four, three, 33, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, No, 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 no. Whatever you do, do not hit that button. Uh oh. That ain't good. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fuck you! Cisco! Eat my ass! I've won, but I don't nearly do enough damage yet. So it's time for cheese. If you take a bottle of enchanting and then you put it in a brewing stand with water, you can make awkward potions into XP potions. And then you wrap all of those ancient knowledge potions in uh, fucking blaze powder, the corpses of blazes, and bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle. This motherfucking charm is gonna double the XP I get on top of knowledge of the ages, on top of the insane amounts of XP that I get from Endermen as they cannot move because they're little bitches in my spawner, which is now maxed out with clocks from apotheosis by the way so we put all of that together that is the setup for ultimate xp gain but don't just take my word for it check this shit out day 45 through 47 yes an entire hour like real life hour i sat down doing this i smacked every creeper i could with the charm of knowledge and the knowledge of the ages sword on for the next three days one thing to note is that all the cool rare stuff that infernal mobs drop don't actually get thrown out with knowledge of the ages so this is a foolproof cheese plan i'm gonna speed right past this until finally by day 48 we got all the xp from thinning a creeper population that we're literally farming to duplicate themselves it's finally time to max out our skill tree and needless to say this was a little early there's a lot here and i'm gonna just dumb it down for you so you don't leave or die of boredom i specced into attack speed because i made my damage and health multiply for every gem that i socketed and on top of that i just made my damage stack with shields and blah 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 a lot of dumb nerd bullshit let's just explain by making an example out of another wither cue the music and get ready <laughs> 8,000 health. Don't go fat dick this time around, buddy. Oh, doesn't it feel good? To just destroy a motherfucker because I feel like it. Now give me your item. Thank you. That 
Now that fucking feels good. I can't get enough. So day 49, we're killing more withers, because, I mean, I do need a lot of nether stars, but it's really just therapeutic to bully them after the kind of shit they put me through. You are just, why are you standing there? Goodbye. <laughs> Help? What do you mean this one only has 4,000? Why are you a bitch? The first one I bought was 11,000! Why are you a bitch? Okay, goodbye, bitch. I guess? At 9,000 this time. I don't understand. Also, the phoenix. I think that means you res when you die, which is not good. Yes. The mini -mod. That's what I was truly looking for. All right, another star is acquired. By the end of the night, I got the final wither smacked. And day 50, after defeating withers, I fought an even stronger boss, storage management. <laughs> for some reason, these fucking cables wouldn't link to anything, and I I, I ran out of space in my storage. Uh, just I just don't don't look at it. I'm trying my best. Day 51, back to something that I can actually do. I'm making netherite. Mm. More specifically, breaking it down to dust with the arcane apparatus, making four divine rubies, and then heading back to the nether to get blaze spawners for blaze rods and more netherite, because I can never have enough. I tried to break a chest here, and the game took an exception to that. Does this text ever go away? Or am I forever shunned for daring to open the fucking... I also found this boss. <laughs> All right, sir, I see you. Dude, I do no damage to you. And with all that blaze powder that I finally collected, I can start making cores. This is a new addition. You need six cores of all different elements for a radiant ruby, because Cisco didn't want to make any recipe simple after what I did to him last time. Luckily, he did make it so you can buy some from the shop, which I haven't really mentioned, but you do get Cisco coins for doing quests and you can sell them at a shop, it's cool. However, they're still a pain in the ass to get. For example, I've never seen a chicken in my life in this desert, so now I'm in the twilight forest begging a bird to drop me a crumb of feather. More core collection on day 53. I got snowballs from the ice queen to get the cold core. Bamboo from the house right above me. <laughs> Lucky me. The thunder core from the store. And if I get enough bright steel, we can make the last core of bright steel. Or at least we could if I didn't run out of gold. Fuck. Light core acquired. Now it's finally time to make radiant rubies. Just want to point out that everything from day 30 up until now was just to make these rubies. To be fair, we aren't supposed to have these till we kill the ender dragon, so I don't really have a lot of room to complain, but I made a total of five radiant rubies today, four for all my bright steel gear to become Cisco, and of course, we're gonna need more netherite after that. And now I finally made the fallen hero gear. Ta-da! And for the final radiant ruby, I made slumbering equilibrium and immediately got that fucker out of bed by socketing the ruby in, and now it is awakened. This weapon not only sounds like sex, a time stamp. it also does a minimum of 2% of any creature's pieces. health as a minimum. This weapon is made out of rare metals forged by a cool dude or something. I don't know. Here's the story. I needed a powerful weapon, and so I traveled to the depths of hell to find the most resilient material known at the time. With it, I fashioned a blade decorating it with softer, more ornate metals. I enhanced and refined the gem until the power within overflowed so vigorously I thought it would consume itself. With the gem now stable, it was finally ready to serve its purpose. I inserted the gem and the blade lit up before me. Enemies hit with it were torched by dragon fire. I fashioned an ornate armor set and one by one I gained the favor of the gods obtaining four unique blessings for the pieces of armor. The power contained within was at first too much for me, but with deep meditation, I learned to control and even amplify it with my own strength. Day 56, I bought all the books needed to make my sword sexy, unbreaking, mending, looting, yada yada. And now we're decked to the nines. So let's go get the rest of those eyes. I'll let Pasty Q tell you how many we need. We have the corrupted eye. We have the nether eye. We have the old eye. We have the rogue eye. And we have the wither eye. 
We need any of the rest of these, but our best bet for finding them is close to our base. The first igloo that I looked up is 8,000 blocks away, which means everything over there is gonna be really, really strong and something that I can't really fight. So that one's kind of out of the running. We can easily get the uh, the evil eye, so we can write off six. Um, magical eye is probably possible if we find a mansion. Guardian eye is going to be a necessity. Uh, exotic eye is probably gonna be important. Witch eye, we're gonna need to work our ass off to grab. A lost eye could be found in any of the fucking mine shafts. Cursed Eye can be found in any Bastion. And honestly, I think the best place for us to start would be the Pirate or the Black Eye. Because I can do this. And I can look up the first buried treasure in our radius. And we can continue to find that. So I think that's where we're gonna go first. First eye was found using the explorer's compass. I went for the black eye by looking up the nearest buried treasure. It has only a 10% chance to drop, but I thought I'd try my luck anyway. I ran through a giant forest for buried treasure, but I didn't get the eye from an evoker, cause why the hell would I? And the second buried treasure I found did get me the pirate eye, so now we're halfway to the portal. Afterwards, I realized all my buffs for the shield don't work anymore because my sword is now two-handed. I had to go back home and circumcise it so we can hold both. Thanks for that, Cisco. Afterwards, I copped the Lost Eye. Got it! Mmm! I finally got the achievement for raiding Shirazi's place. Oh, that's what it's called! That's the thing that I raided on day- Oh! Not a Taj Mahal or Vegas Sh Shirazi's! Yeah, of course! Afterwards, I'm running to a mansion for that damn magical eye. These dudes were kind of slapping my cheeks around because I was so far from spawn. And it wasn't even worth it because I didn't even get the damn magical eye. Next evoker camp. No eye. I thought I'd find some eyes in this giant spaceship, but it was all awash as well. I did fuck up a lot of dudes though, so I can't really complain too hard. I still need that eye. So I'm causing a raid on my own village. I got three totems here and I've killed so many evokers, but I did not get the magical eye. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm like 15 evokers in now. I even put capturing four on my scythe to try to get an evoker egg to put it in a spawner. And then I would just eventually have an infinite amount of evokers. And even that's not enough. So I upped it to capturing six and it didn't get me the evoker eye, but I did get a different pupil. One from a witch to yes! give me the witch's eye. Nice. Day 62, I'm taking out all my frustration on a mutant zombie. Yep, okay, yeah, now you go take a nap. You go, nope, you take a nap again. You go back up, and then, nope, wait, nope, nap again. And he's gone now. Good try. I did get lucky enough to find a skeleton horse, and with looting six and capture six, it didn't drop the one thing I wanted. Literally the rarest thing in the game, so that's that's fine. Rarest eyeball. I'm not complaining. I'm not mad. No, it's okay. This hey, we've been what looking for eyes for 20 days now, and no, it's going really well. Day 63. Here's yet another mansion. This one in the sand. Can you see how I'm getting fed up with this? I finally killed an evoker, and it dropped its magical fucking eye. Next, from the desert to the sea, we're killing guardians and stealing nautilus shells. I didn't get the guardian eye, but I did get a ton of nautilus shells so I can make the exotic eye. Okay, so literally during this conversation, while I'm recording, my headphones just broke. Day 64, I went to a different ocean monument. On the way, I found Cisco's custom structure and I found the amulet of vitality, giving me 10 extra hearts and the emperor's crown, giving me six extra defense. Now back to the monument. I got everything I needed for the exotic eye and finally, after six guardians, I found the guardian eye. And if you're counting, that's 10. Crafting the exotic eye makes 11 and with the power of my slit coworkers, co-workers, clerics specifically, we can make the final eye, the evil eye. And that is finally 12. I always hate going after these fucking eyeballs in mod packs. Like I understand the progression and why they're there and it's cool, it's fun, it's interesting, but man, I hate it. After that, I ended stream and headed off for the night. Day 66, I woke up to a message from Cisco and an update to the mod pack. Loading the game back up, Cisco had changed a few things. He took out the ability to get Dragon's Breath early, so, Sorry to everyone that plays this after me. Completely erased the hunger ring and deleted the eternal enchant, which I personally think is very fair. Now I have to eat like a normal person, but luckily I have another relic that will aid us here. The Infiniham, which counts as golden apples for some reason, and I can now just eat that for forever. I wrapped up the day getting Aurora blocks. Why? Well, come find out. Day 67, I'm renovating. This house is getting super cluttered, so I spent the next couple of days making another layer, a bedroom, and using Aurora blocks as a nice accent to everywhere. 
And with these canopy trap doors, I think it's looking pretty damn good. Day 68, I'm still building, and I had to make a whole new spot for the Twilight Forest portal, but I still think it looks good. And you know what else is about to look good? That's right, it's day 69 time, baby. It's kind of our ritual in these 100 days adventures on each 69th day to commemorate the funny sex number with a 69 sign. Most of the time it's in the sky or on the wall, but this time I wanted to make it the center floor piece to our base. I tried that fucking foggy glass shit that you'd see everyone build on YouTube and wasted about nine stacks of glass on it. This took all the way into day 70, but by day 70, this is the sign we have. I think I sort of pulled off the foggy glass look. Okay, it's not my best work, but it's all right. If you want to see some of my best 69 signs, you can literally buy them on eqshop.live. Oh, shit. Merch plug. Day 71, I'm maxing out ham. Since I no longer have the hunger ring, because Cisco's a whiny baby, I made sure to put on the ring that gave me some more hearts. And chat told me that I should try taking on the seven deadly sins before going to the dragon. Yeah, okay. Seven deadly sins. That sounds easy. I've never seen these bosses before, but if we beat them up, we'll get a lot of money to spend at the Cisco store. So here goes nothing. All right, the sin of greed. Before we fight the rest of you guys, just, just, how does the sin of greed go? Uh, he shakes the world, and he sends me through it. Not what I expected, if I'm honest. Not what I expected you to do. What the fuck, greed? May I please fight greed? Like, I'd like to hit it. Where did it go? Don't you do it. He just makes me ethereal. This is stupid. Okay, maybe bow? Gotta use your shield. Greed should not make me sink. Are you sure your name's Greed and not dumb? Stupid? Stupid, stinky, fuck-ass, no parents? Welcome to Under the Sea. Under the sea, greed is a bitch. I'm in a ditch, naturally. Well, that was it. That, that was fucking it. Greed was apparently the worst one because his phase through the floor bullshit. So I was more than prepared to whack lust, then envy. Timestamp. Hello, pride. You have so little. Uh, yeah. And there's Wistiver. Holy shit. Oh my god, he did damage. He's doing a lot of damage. Gluttony, holy sh Gluttony? Uh, holy fuck, he actually hurt me. Sloth. How am I doing, Hawaiian? Let's find out. The walking bad. Or is it bed? I don't know, it, it, it was bed. It's now the walking dead. And finally, war. They all went down relatively easily, some more than others. Once they were done, I had like 64 Cisco coins and I could buy anything with that. Orbs, rubies, netherite, all important materials I'd need for later. So what did I do? I gambled it all on loot boxes. Come on, big money, no whammies, big money, no whammies, big money, no whammies. And a Yahtzee. Got a motherfucking Elytra before going into the end. Just goes to show you kids, always gamble. Eclipse team does not condone gambling your life savings away. Please be responsible and don't sue us. After that, hello, sir. Is that a sharpness 10 ax? Don't mind if I do. And using this tome, I can just yoink those enchants off and put them onto equilibrium. Well, let's keep it rolling then. I fucked the sins. Let's fight the tier one bosses. Timestamp, devil's ante is made. Uh, we're gonna fight the boss. Dame Fortuana. It's a, a thousand health. Really? Oh, Dame. <laughs> Oh, Dame. Fortune's favor. We can make a cool disc, which looks so sick. Uh, we can make sometimes negates incoming attacks affected by luck, or sometimes attacks do more damage affected by luck. Which one do we make? When you beat the Devil's Ante, you get an item that you can use to make a curio slot thingy. The best one is the dice that gives a one in six chance to absolutely crank your damage up. The Ace of Iron gives resistance sometimes, so I need that one too. I had to fight the Devil's Ante twice for it, but whatever. And the next fight is Bell, who died really fast. Thank you, dice.
The Spectre was a bitch to fight, and I'm just rapid firing the last ones. I made the Caged Heart with my reward, which gives major defense boost for bosses that do about a fourth of my health when they sneeze at me. Going a little fast here, so before we go to our next boss, I slowed it down and played the disc I got from killing Rosalind, who almost oh, okay, killed he's gonna me. Pop. Oh, he ejaculated. And he's just sitting there. You know he's rearing up for the world's greatest attack. All right, bye. And I'm leaving this in the video for you guys because this song is fire. Listen to a bit of it. It's called fucking Frog Punch. Whoa! And I, I, I feel like I've been punched by a frog. Oh, Noise Storm just got put to shame. What? What the fuck just happened? This is from Meet Your Fight. This is from the mod Meet Your Fight. Which, to be fair, they do only have great songs in this mod. We ask Alpaca to add it. It does not keep getting better. Yeah, I gotta add this to my music disc playlist. Chat, this fucking disc is colored like blackjack. If it's bad, I'm gonna cry. Its name is Magnum. Let him cook, yeah, give him a minute. Before you flip it over to the other side. Okay, it's a banger, but it isn't what I just had happen to me. Frog Punch is the name of that song. It's good, but it's not as crazy. It is the prettiest disc I've ever seen, though. Oh my god. For KH? Yeah. It should be fucking, like the stuff we use for intro. Frog Punch kicks ass. Like, what the fuck? Anyways, um, that's the end of that time. Day 75, Polish. I'm in the nether for our next boss, using the explorer's compass to find his ass. They scream. Guys! What the fuck, man? Stop! J what are you doing to the poor soul? I don't... I... That is either the hottest sex in the world or terrifyingly painful things. Day 76, we found them. The Netherite Monstrosity. A gatekeeper boss. If I can beat this, I'm ready for tier 2 level bosses. Let's just hope it doesn't rip my fucking head off. Un Unmute here. Hello! I've come from a very far away to come say hello. You're gonna do it for me. Life steal. You're fucked for a giant pit in the floor. I took a good chunk of damage. Alright. Now it's time to get serious. Nope. I'm not kidding him. All right. Now that we 
know how much health you have, how much damage you do, how much fucking health you do. Let's, uh, turn this into a proper fight. Hi! I like that you like to just chill over there from time to time. It makes me pretty happy. But then you like to get closer, and that makes me really sad. Come on, health bar, fucking climb faster. Get me out of this corner. It's gonna hurt. Ow. It didn't hurt. Nice. 91 is his fucking level. Jesus. I cannot dodge this fuck. Cisco, your bosses are so balanced and good, my friend. They're so balanced and good, Cisco! Done bulking. Alright. Woo! Alright, we take way less damage off them now. Switch to the sword that doesn't do percentage, that just does damage. Come on. Get out of here, you bitch. You know it's done. Holy shit. Okay. That hurt. Like, four hearts left hurt. I have like 60 hearts right now, and he ate all of them. I had totems, but I don't think he would have cared. Uh, maybe I'm not ready for tier two bosses yet. For now, I ran home to lick my wounds and plan my next move. There's no way in hell that I'm going to the dragon yet. Day 78, I got some more Cisco coins with my villager hall that was ethically sourced, I promise. And I don't know why I did this, but I went to the Aether to beat up a cube with eyeballs, the slider boss. Forty damage. What are we doing to him? He's scared of me. No shot. He's scared. Jeez. Suck it, you dumb little block bitch! He's afraid! Which is good, because we're doing like no damage. Because pickaxes are not swords. He like tilted. My man's a di he was like, uh-uh. Man fucking just, my man just italicized. Holy shit, my man just italicized. But we're gonna be here for a while. I'm a poor shot. And while you're watching this, if you haven't already liked the video, um, I don't know what else to convince you. All I do is break things. So please, please follow the, adver the adventure, the journey. Please watch this shit. Subscribe. Comment down below for the algorithm gods. All of that shit. Hey, look, it's a perfect loop now. Ow. My feelings. Ta-da! We beat it in the ass. It was at least a little better than the man who was feared as soon as the fight began. I got the Shield of Repulsion. Sweet. 79, maybe a little less blood spilling today. Okay, let's do some exploring. I'm trying to go for both the Everbright and Everdawn portals, cause I'll need them for bosses later. And it also gives me an excuse to find more gems, so hopefully I can get strong enough to not get mollywopped by everything that looks at me funny. I found Everdawn super easily and bought their lighter, but I couldn't find the Everbright portal, the blue one. This next clip is just titled Frog in my notes. So here's a frog. This man is schmoove dashing. Hi. Oh, see ya. He's out of here. He's fucking gone. Fucker, I am trying to look at the cute frog right now. Listen here, fuck asses. I am trying to look at the cute. Look at him! He's in the ground! 
God, if I didn't care about YouTube thumbnails, you would be the thumbnail. Katie, I don't even know how I managed this, but a wandering villager wanted to sell me a rainbow furnace. And so I got that. And if you're wondering, it's it's a little Just fast. Just a little bit of copper. Let's see what copper. How long does this smell? I ended the day by going back to my spawner and remade at Creeper Base to farm gunpowder. What I didn't expect was when the creepers died, they had a high chance of dropping apotheosis gems. Okay, why have I been grinding gems any other way? I found automatically the greatest way to grind gems. Get me a backpack and we got to take all of these out of the system. This is, I have so fucking many. I went exploring for days when all I could, all I had to do was fucking just mollywop 20 million creepers with scythes. After a day of farming the best gems from a mobile creepers, I used those Godforge pearls I mentioned earlier to start re-socketing my gear, giving it four socket slots for gems. My chest plate even got Five. And now I think you've all graduated. It's time to reveal what these gems do. So turn to page 69 in your textbooks, because I'm about to take Cisco to fucking school. So, the apotheosis gems are meant to be socketed into your gear, and that's how you get the buffs based on where you put them in. You know, chest blade does different than helmet, whatever. What I didn't tell you is that one skill tree path stacks and multiplies those upgrades based on where you put them. And in this game, you can reforge anything. Even my dice, charm, necklace, shield, fucking shield, and all of the gems I've been collecting, even the shittier tier ones, can be fused with copies of each other in this gem cutter till you make better ones, sometimes getting all the way up to perfect on their own. So the plan was to stack as many of the best gems in this game onto my gear and let that skill tree buff do the work for us. And we're not gonna do those Dumbo baby gems that let you breathe underwater or give you more mana. Nah, 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 nah. Straight damage, health, and defense. I got a couple gems that triple my protection layers, some that just max the damage I can receive and chop it by 20%, and I'm wearing two of them. Life steal on my sword, just in case something can hurt me through that. 20% attack speed up, more levels of damage on my shield and sword, have I mentioned the health? Let me put it this way. Cisco has a mod for you to track these stats and the culmination of your character. And while we're watching all the footage of me going goblin mode on these fucking gems, create a mental image of how many hearts I'm going to have by day 89. And while we're watching the footage of me going goblin mode on these fucking gems, I want you to create a mental image of how many hearts I'm gonna have by the end of day 89. Keep it in your head for now and see if you're correct. The last thing I got for now is step height because I couldn't find any more gems to use. And I say for now, because at the end of day 88, I've got more socket slots. I just don't have enough gems for him. But now the moment you've been waiting for. How much health do I have on day 89? 100? 200, surely. All right, so we have added plus 120 fire damage to my helmet, plus 20 attack speed, 20%, uh, 68% arrow velocity. We've got, God, it's so large. Uh, physical damage reduced by 20.5%, plus 40% max health, gaining the monstrous two effect when I'm hit, which is insane. Six levels to protection, taking damage as a 12.5% chance to fortify me with twilight shields, which your guess is as good as mine as to what that fucking means. Three levels to berserker's fury. We've got physical damage reduced by 20.5%, six levels to protection, two slots for whatever later, uh, fucking swim speed, step height over here. Our our swords got, uh, uh, that's a pickaxe. Our swords got 4.5% lifesteal, 20.5% attack speed, 25% uh, crit damage, and 6% lifesteal. Yeah, we doubled up on that shit, bitch. And our shield, which is arguably the most important thing in the goddamn world, is 25% max health, 5% max health, again, 20% armor, and 15% armor toughness. Not to mention all of the goddamn gemstones that we have slotted into our gear. <gasps> I think it's time to kill the fucking dragon. I overflow my own health bar now. Oh, and I got some crazy strength buffs. If something gets me below like 80% health, uh, but that's not even the wildest part. The damage output I have now, well, I think I should just show you. If you didn't catch it, I do 1500 damage, which sometimes doubles with the dice charm. <laughs> Oh, Cisco's fucked. Ending the day, I maxed out Elytra and I'm ready to destroy the Ender Dragon. While preparing for my final trek to the end, I made the remote that lets me craft as well inside of it. I should have done this days ago, but I was too busy becoming a god. I grabbed all the eyes needed and went to bed. Day 91, I flew off to the stronghold, broke in, found the portal, stole from the local library because they won't renew my library card, put the eyes in and let's go for it. 
What? Fuck you, fuck you, Ender Dragon. I'm, I'm, I'm on a boat. Oh Jesus Christ! It, I have been. Okay, I was on a boat. What is down here? Fuck you, Ender Dragon. I'm busy. Should not have given myself a bajillion step. Jellyfish necklace. Gold fucking gear we could turn into Godforge pearls. Oh, dragon, eat my dick. We'll fight you later. All right, fine. I'll fight you. Oh, I did it at the riff. Oh, I was so proud of that. <laughs> so that was just embarrassing. Well, you know the drill. We're now in the proper end, and I broke into the first end city that I saw for all that sweet, sweet loot. I got my first legendary apothic gear, which I can break down into more of those Godforge pearls later for reforging. You know, in case I need to get even stronger. One thing to note here, there are these things called mimics, and if you hit them, they will duplicate your helmet and sword and proceed to teach you what they both feel like. So every time I see one, I piss my pants a little bit more and more. This guy's like gonna drop some really great stuff if I could, if I, I mean, if I could, if I, if I could, if I could get down there and, and kick his, if I could, if I could, that guy's gonna drop some really good stuff if I can kick his ass. Damn it. Well, he's spraying me with more than cheese, sir. Got him. Day 94, the dragon wasn't too much to write home on, so let's keep this going. Here is a tier two boss that will probably be much more of a challenge, right? There's another one? First, I took one? out their minion. What the fuck? That's new. He can't do any damage to me. And then. Yep, it's the eye. 5,000 health. Oh, sir. Oh, my friend. Uh, did we really need to go one step lower? Goodbye now. Was that a shulker? That sounds like an insult challenge. Like, was that a shulker? That was pretty easy to kill. It must have been just a shulker that I murdered. Oh, fuck! Well, I guess not. 895, Actually, I'm grabbing all these purple lamps because they pretty. Boss. And it's probably worth mentioning that Cisco would join stream one final time to watch me absolutely decimate everything in front of me. And it was just icing on the sadness cake when in one of the structures, I found this magic book. Take off, take off, take off, take off. Infinite flight has been achieved. Boing, boing. T96, the Obsidolith is a tier three boss, but I was feeling a little cocky, so I tried it anyway. Do 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 do. I'ma leave if it's level 200. Come on, bitch. I'm bored. Wow, you fucking blow dicks. How much damage you do? None. All right, fucking get your shit rocked, pussy. Pussy! Wait, what? Man is a level three boss, but you know what? I'll fucking take it. Let's just start rocking, but uh, okay. God damn it, man. What is up with the breaking armor sound effect? Can we stop that? All right. Bye. I'm gonna have to kill this thing again. A tier three boss. We can, we can bop tier three bosses now. And Obsidian Heart. Speaking of daddy's help, you're gonna need Papa's help when I'm done with you, bitch. Let's do this shit. Yeah? What you gonna do, huh? Yeah? You fucking suck at this game. Alright, good try. Wait, what? Can I not hit him with this weapon? Oh. Goodbye, sir. After the night had fallen, the rampaging didn't stop. Oh, found you. You really are just Baracko the Sun Chief. You're trash! Go back home! Fuck, you're garbage. Not stand a chance. Please level up. 273. Sir. 
dude. Oh god, he's attacking! What's he doing? He's infernal. Did he just teleport away? No, the dead. Oh, he's right there. Bye now. How dare you? Yo, EQ, I worked at a Win Dixie in the Florida when they existed. Yo, that's lit. Also, boss. Hello. Well, we tried. <laughs> Woo! Day 98 and oh, look, another Cisco tower. Sadly, I didn't find the artifact I need. We'll have to locate that in 200 days. You heard that right. If there's one victory Cisco can take home from this video is that I can't dust his mod pack in 100 days again like I did last time. We've got about 15 more bosses, the final boss, a whole new set of gear, and Cisco's has made a new game plus mode in this one. I tip my hat to you, Cisco. And if you want to see me fuck up the rest of this game, comment down below and drop a sub. You're not going to want to miss it. But for now, maybe it was Cisco, maybe it was Karma, but this game had one more trick up its sleeve. Loading the chunks to an ice maze, I found Frostmaw, who was just sleeping peacefully, so I eviscerated him. But the game started showing signs of wear and tear. Chunks wouldn't load, I'd be falling through the void, and I really think the game was just done with my shit. Day 99, I found out the problem was my storage system with so many items in it, even though I'm not putting the apothic gems in there, just was ruining my frame rate. So we'll fix that for next time. But till then, here's a laggy Cornelia fight. <laughs> Who am I kidding? It's a Cornelia execution. Oh, there it is. F yeah, no, this is where it was. Yeah, sure. Fuck off, man. I don't even care. You, I, I have three frames in my life and every one of them is dedicated to killing your pussy ass. Come back, bitch, do it. No, 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 do it. No, I wanna see you. No, 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 revive yourself. No, come on, do it. Come on, do it. Come on, fucking come back to me. Come on, do it. Fucking do it, pussy! You're dead! And you're lagged! There you go! No, you're dead and you're alive again! And now you're dead! What's more? Good fucking shit! Fuck you! Oh my god! And there you have it. Cisco got me. I'm gonna need at least another 100 days to kill everything in this pack. And what a pack it was. You can download it in the description below and play it yourself. There's so many ways to play. You don't have to spec into anything that I did or steal netherite on day one. It's truly a masterpiece of a mod pack. And I'm sorry I had to break it again, Cisco. Our battle seems to never be finished. So make sure you subscribe because you're not going to want to miss 200 days. But for now, my name has been Eclipse, EQ for short, and thank you for watching.